Good morning. Good morning from the office. Relative calm is descending on what has been a slightly frazzled morning. Um, the good news is that um, I got delayed because the garage phoned and they're not expecting to pick up the car until half past 11. So we should be able to do morning prayer uninterrupted. This is a good thing. Um, apparently they've got to drive up from Haven't where they've just dropped off a car. So who knew? Right. Oh, bless you. Morning. So morning, Barbara. Morning, Brenda. Bless you, Margaret, um, though you can't hear. Thank you. Thank you for posting it across um, to the St Barnabas feed. It's lovely to have our praying community together this morning. I'm using the work phone this morning um, in case other random happenings happen on the, the other one. And it's, it's definitely, the quality is not quite as good. So I'm sorry if um, the images and or sound are a bit dodgy. Shouldn't be, but anyway. So this morning, take a deep breath. Uh, I'm using the Iona liturgy this morning and I'll be using um, a firm favourite of a psalm, 139, which is the lectionary psalm for today. One of the things I love about the Iona liturgy, one of many things I love about the Iona liturgy, is it has a real sense of um, people praying together from around the world that there is the opportunity to recognise um, that whilst we might be um, a little select group here online, that we are praying with others, not just in Iona, but um, around the Celtic community. Let's take a moment of quiet. Thank you for confirming you can hear me. The word belongs to God, the earth and all its people. How good it is, how wonderful to live together in unity. Love and faith come together, justice and peace join hands. If Christ's disciples keep silent, these stones would shout aloud. Open our lips, O God, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. And we do praise you, Lord, for this new day, for the sunshine, for the beginnings of autumn. We remember those who harvest the food that we eat in this country and around the world. And we pray for those for whom that harvest is difficult because of climate change and other reasons. And we pray for those who will struggle this year to put food on their table as prices quite possibly increase. You are Lord of our harvest, Lord. Care, care for and comfort and fill your people spiritually and nourish them physically. In Jesus' name, Amen. And we are before God. And so we recognise 
that so often we fall short of what he desires for us in the way we think, in the way we um, act, in the way we speak. And we ask him to have mercy on us. Holy God, maker of all, have mercy on us. Jesus Christ, servant of the poor, have mercy on us. Holy Spirit, breath of life, have mercy on us. Before God, with the people of God, I confess to my brokenness, to the ways I wound my life, the lives of others and the life of the world. May God forgive me, Christ renew me, and the Spirit enable me and all of us to grow in love. Amen. And we seek God's help to lead better lives, to be more focused on him and our service to others. Move among us, O God, give us life. Let your people rejoice in you. Make our hearts clean within us. Renew us in mind and in spirit. Give us again the joy of your help. With your spirit of freedom sustain us. And so as we prayed for those who harvest and those who need to eat that harvest, we pray for God's help in the situation specifically in our own lives, Lord, where we are struggling to perhaps see a way forward, to find the energy to do what needs doing, to find focus on tasks that are perhaps necessary but unpalatable. We pray, Lord, for your help in our lives, that we might look to you for wisdom and encouragement. And that you might guide our footsteps through all things and in all ways. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And so we pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us in the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. With the whole church, we affirm that we are made in God's image, befriended by Christ, empowered by the Spirit. With people everywhere, we affirm God's goodness at the heart of humanity, planted more deeply than all that is wrong. With all creation, we celebrate the miracle and wonder of life, the unfolding purposes of God, forever at work in ourselves and in the world. And so with that affirmation of faith in mind, we come to our scripture today. Psalm 139. O Lord, you have searched me out and know me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. 
you discern my thoughts from afar. You mark out my journeys and my resting place, and are acquainted with all my ways. For there is not a word on my tongue, but you, O Lord, know it altogether. You encompass me behind and before, and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, so high that I cannot attain it. Where can I go then from your spirit, or where can I flee from your presence? If I climb up to heaven, you are there. If I make the grave my bed, you are there also. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me. Your right hand hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will cover me, and the light around me turn to night. Even the darkness is no darkness with you. The night is as clear as the day. Darkness and light to you are both alike. For you yourself created my inmost parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I thank you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvellous are your works. My soul knows them well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in secret and woven in the depths of the earth. Your arms beheld my form as yet unfinished. Already in your book were all my members written. As day by day they were fashioned when as yet there was none of them. How deep! Are your counsels to me, O God, how great is the sum of them. If I count them, there are, they are more in number than the sand, and at the end I am still in your presence. O oh, that you would slay the wicked, O God, that the bloodthirsty might depart from me. They speak against you with wicked intent. Your enemies take up your name for evil. Do I not oppose those, O Lord, who oppose you? Do I not abhor those who rise up against you? I hate them with a perfect hatred. They have become my own enemies also. Search me out, O God, and know my heart. Try me and examine my thoughts. See if there is any wickedness in me and lead me in the way everlasting. It's a rather wonderful psalm, that. A psalm of assurance and affirmation that places us very carefully in God's care. His knowledge of us is um, incredible, more, more than we know ourselves, as the saying goes. We cannot flee from his presence. It's very easy to say when things get difficult that we are in a dark place. Um, we've just developed a grand dog in the family um, who's a rescue uh, from Romania and um, Chris and Lucy have had her for mm, three months I think and are discovering, despite the fact she's uh, a year old this week, that she appears to be scared of the dark. Um, doesn't sleep properly in a dark room, will wake up with, wake herself up with nightmares. Um, and won't go out into the garden, into the darkness on her own. Um, and we all get those times, don't we, when we're afraid of the, the darkness that is um, covering us, whatever that darkness may be. It might just be too much to do, it might be something more spiritual, it might be just that we're quite depressed and anxious about the circumstances of life at present. Even 
even darkness is no darkness with you. The night is as clear as the day. Darkness and light to you are both alike. That's verse 11. And I don't think the psalmist is talking about moonlight. It's difficult though for us to um, focus our attention on God's light in our lives, the good things that he has given us, the fact that he has made us in his own image and knit us together in our mother's womb when all around us seems a bit bleak. And on those occasions, this is a great psalm to act as a a call to faith, to uh, an encouragement to remember that God is at hand, a light in and of itself as a work of poetry. God knows us. He knows our sitting down and our rising up, even when it's because we've fallen over that we're sat down. And he discerns our thoughts from afar. He knows our fears. And I'm aware from our prayer list at the moment that there are many who are struggling with their fears, who are struggling with their health, which is why they're afraid. And hopefully the words of Psalm 139 might be an encouragement to them. So if they're not people who naturally tune in to our thoughts in the morning, perhaps you could encourage them to know A, that they're prayed for, but also that perhaps they could reread Psalm 139 and know just how much God loves them and is faithful. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us, thanks be to God. And so we continue in prayerful reflection, remembering the dark places of the world in which God's light needs to shine. We pray, Lord, through the power of your Holy Spirit and in the name of Jesus, that in the darkest situations, in communities that are broken, where borders have walls, even if they're invisible ones, that, Lord, you will shine your light one little action at a time or dramatically in a movement to healing. We ask you, Lord, to bring justice, mercy and hope to those who need it most, that they might bear witness to your love for the world. We continue to pray for our schools this week. Um, Some of them have got the children back or some of the children back. Some of them are still awaiting um, the whole school being together, um, which will probably happen on Monday. There is a lot of tension around our education system, around the health and welfare of our children, physical and mental. We pray, Lord, for those teachers and children who are struggling with their mental health at this time, who need to acknowledge the difficulties that they see, the darkness that is threatening to overwhelm them so that by speaking out, light may be shined into those situations. 
which caused the most difficulty. Help those who struggle to find the willpower and the courage, if that's the right word, and I'm not sure it is, to go back into communal spaces, be they schools or elsewhere. I just pray, Lord, that they might know your presence with them and that by acknowledging the difficulties, they will be listened to. They will be encouraged. We pray for those facing unreasonable workloads that have been given them by the circumstances in which we live. We pray for our leaders, Lord, that they might become reasonable and understanding and insightful. And set aside selfishness, pride, and self aggrandizement. Through your power, Lord, act in each situation where hope is most needed. And we pray, Lord, for those of our fellowships and others known to us elsewhere. This morning we remember particularly Celia, Joan and John, Margaret and Norman, Joy, Sue, Margaret, Brian and Beryl, Adrian and Sean, as well as Bex in Manchester and Simon near Coventry. Pour out your healing power on them, Lord, that they might know your presence in their distress. Give us wisdom, Lord, to know how to help them best. And we pray where relevant for positive results, medication that works, and good relationships with uh, those who look after them in the medical system. O oh Christ, you are within each of us. It's not just the interior of our walls, be they churches or homes. It's our own inner being you have renewed. We are your temple not made with hands. We are your body. If every wall should crumble and every church decay, we are your habitation. Nearer are you than breathing, closer than hands and feet. Ours are the eyes with which you in the mystery look out with compassion on the world. Yet we bless you for the place in which we find ourselves today, for your directing of us, your redeeming of us and your indwelling. We ask not for what we want, but for what you know we need as we offer this day and ourselves for you and to you, through Jesus Christ our Saviour. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. We will not offer to God offerings that cost us nothing. Go in peace. To love and to serve, we will seek peace and pursue it in the name of the Trinity of love, God in community, holy and one.
So that's my reflections for this morning. I hope the day treats you well. At St Mary's on Sunday we have an 8 o'clock Book of Common Prayer Holy Communion um, which if you would like to book to come to you are most welcome and at 10 o'clock at St Barnabas we've got um, partially live worship um, you are most welcome to join us um, it would be helpful if people booked up in advance um, spread the word if that's not relevant to you um, it will be a mixture of live stuff and uh, stuff that's been recorded that I'll be putting together this evening. I do pray for the tech that it all goes and I am pleased to announce there is now Wi-Fi back in St Mary's. So hopefully that will all go well next week. Go well and God bless everyone. Um, see you on Monday, if not before. <laughs>